Hi there, it's been such a long time that I came on to talk about all things wool. I've almost forgotten what it is I do when I do talk about the wool. But I'm here. I've been spending so much time in the designing world um, with my sewing, bringing out new patterns, being on TV, creating new content and doing wonderful things like working in partnership with massive companies like Janome, which has been fantastic, mind-blowing, um, but it has completely dominated my world to say the very least. But the thing that's kept me sane in all of that time has been and continues to be my knitting. So uh, I thought I would come on and just do a short video of what I'm currently working on and um, maybe just a few things that I've worked on over the past sort of maybe eight months. So if that sounds like your cup of tea, if you wanna stay with me and see what I've been up to, um, do get something to drink, eat, knitting, whatever takes your fancy, and I'm gonna dive straight in. So the first thing that I'm gonna to talk to you about is what I'm currently working on. Now, the normal format is what I'm wearing, but I'm not wearing anything knitted, I'm wearing something that I've made. But if you are still interested, this is actually the Friday Pattern Company um, Arlo track top, and underneath it I am wearing just a t-shirt that I made some time ago now. Um, so yeah, I do tend to mix up what I'm wearing between my handmade and my hand knits. So let's get on and let me show you what I'm currently working on. So at the minute, I have been working on a little project. Now I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the pattern first. It's from this wonderful book. I do love these books. It is a West Yorkshire Spinners fleece book um, beautiful patterns in here and I went ahead and I went to my local yarn store and I bought some fleece yarn which you will probably be aware isn't that cheap um, the colours are wonderful I mean how do you even start but I knew that I wanted to make a jumper that was one of those really tough wintry wears that's going to last me for well over a decade I fancied cables um, so I went ahead and bought all the um, skeins and got them all wound up which I absolutely love doing if I've still got the footage I'll pop it in here actually um, and started working on this knit now there are a lot of charts in here let me show you in fact let me show you the jumper close-up first I'm sure there was a picture in here so you can make it as a vest or the jumper and it is all over cables just drop my arm I settled on this bottle green color thinking it was quite nice and sort of earthy colored foresty and I thought that'd be lovely feels really soft smells good and it feels nice and I have slowly been working on all of these cables it's a 16 row pattern and I timed myself last night that it takes me 30 minutes to do the cable row of patterning so it's a really slow make and yesterday I finally finished that one block of repeats now when I finished that I did my little wee moment and sat back applauded myself and then why does it take so long to realize you made a mistake why can anybody see what I've gone and done I did find the pattern confusing, I'm not gonna lie, but there's no pearl bumps. So I've kind of lost some of the detail that you need around the cables where you should be purling around it to make them stand out. So you can see all along, we've got all these little one forward, one backs, and then we've got all these strange little cables and this beautiful sort of diamond shape that starts to emerge in the middle, but it should be standing out much, much more than it currently is. My heart sank, I'm not gonna lie, my heart sank. I got nervous at starting this. It took me ages from starting the ribbing to actually moving on. Two weeks I put it on hold and that is not like me. And I knew what the problem was, it was the anxiety. The anxiety in me was rising. And then I spent five nights doing this bit. And I kid you not, 
it might feel wonderful to have done it, but I also thought this jump is going to take me forever to make. I mean, forever, all over. I mean, even if I just did the front, there's so much work in the sleeves. I mean, there really, really is. Let me just pick it up again, and then I can tell you what the sweater was called. Ilkley, Ilkley cabled vest and jumper. So to remind you again, there we go. There, it's a lot, it's an awful lot. So I need to decide what's my plan here. So I gave it a lot of thought and I have decided I'm not going to continue on with this. Now, I'm not cross or disappointed with myself because, and it's not like me, I am a completer normally. I'm proud that I'm a completer, but this will give me no joy, none. The end product will, but I'm almost sure that by the time I've done it, I won't even like it because I won't have enjoyed the process. This project would consume a year, I'm sure it would take me about a year to make, something like that. And because I don't have multiple projects on the go, I will reach burnout, it will make me miserable, I won't be a pleasure to be sitting around in the evenings while I'm working on it. I'm not sure it's worth it. I think there's better patterns out there for me, maybe with like a bigger sort of defined pattern on it that I can use this yarn for. So instead, I'm gonna be pulling all this off and finding a, a more suitable pattern for me. And I'm not sad. I'm really, really not sad about that. <clears throat> I think it's done me a favor um, realizing that I've done that wrong. And you know, best to find out now rather than three repeats later on. That would make me sad. So I've got a bit of a what next plan up my sleeve um where do i go now and the truth is i've got a project here that i started in the summer and it needs finishing so i can't be bothered i'm not going to lie it's not for this time of year but i am going to do it and do you remember back in the summer if you follow me on my social medias you'll see that i went away on holiday and i was very very sick girl um, and the absolutely only thing that i did apart from being incredibly ill the whole time was I made a sock, just the one sock, and this was it. Beautiful sock, really, really nice. I don't remember what this yarn is. I might have a little label somewhere. If I remember, I'll put pop a note in. It is the softest, it feels very lacy, very, very fragile threads here. Um, oh, I do, yeah. So it's from the Wool Ladies. It's a hand-dyed yarn, and it's, it's a platinum sock four ply and it's called spice plum how lovely it was 17 pounds um but it is a 75 percent superwash merino um merino wool and 25 percent nylon and these are going to be lovely when they're done i know it so i've got that little bit of cuffing started and my plan is to now spend my time actually making up so that i've got a pair of socks because the truth is i'm desperate to make some double knit socks far more suiting for this cooler weather we've got. Um, but I don't like to carry on having projects stacking up. I've been there, I've done that, it doesn't work for me. It makes me a very stressful person. I keep this in a little bag that I made. It's uh, one of my pattern designs. It's a two part bag if you're interested, called um, Sylvie, couldn't think them. Sylvie, and I'll link in the pattern below should you be interested in bag patterns and things like that. But it's a cute one for my knitting. Um, because you can open it up and it's got these little pull out panels here which I love to tuck over so that I knit from it and actually when I was on the plane I was able to use this to hook onto the cup holder and that's where my yarn stayed as I knitted away it was perfect when I have done that sock I plan on moving on to another pattern which is um, going to feed my need to use some of this. So I don't plan on buying yarn for a little while, not unless I really, really have to. Um, if I went to visit somewhere that was particularly, I don't know, special or lovely, maybe I'd buy myself a skein as like a, a sentiment kind of thing. But really, I do want to work from this stash because I don't think it's large, it's considered. Um, and I'll pop in some footage as well at the end so you can see the stash if you're interested. 
um, but I seem to have what I need at this moment in time. So a while ago off Sewing Street in their sale, I bought a lot of the Highland Heathers in this lovely colour. I don't know what shade it is. It says the words grist. I think that's what it says anyway. It's not a beige, it's not a grey. I'm not really sure what it is. It's certainly not cream, but I do quite like it as a natural tone. And the pattern that I've got in mind, which is this one here, um, just needs a little bit of yarn for this detail work here, um, which as it goes, I have got. So I've got one ball of this green, a moss colored Highland Heathers. And then I've got this bit left over from a knit that I did. And actually over here, oh, I've also got this little bit too. So between all of that, I have got the yarns to go alongside this to make that knit up. So yeah, it looks like it's gonna be a nice knit. It's made flat, so it will need seaming, but I think those colour work at the bottom is going to be really pretty. And because I do that right at the start, I think I'm just going to end up flying through this make, and it's going to be really nice as a, a layered piece. So I'm excited about that. We'll see how that goes. So without talking about the stash, um, but think about those sentimental pieces, I have bought a skein recently. But if I'm honest, I can't remember where I got it from. Oh, it says on the label. It's from one of my late, uh, locals. It's from, um, from Lincolnshire with love. Um, it's a little store in the uphill sort of bale area of Lincoln where I work. And they sell like secondhand like little bits. They've got like, like mini stalls so people can take in their, their things they want to move on to new homes. And they've just got one lady who particularly just runs the shop and obviously takes commission from shelves, things like that. But she's got a little yarn corner, which I think is really, really sweet. And in there, I came across this yarn. And they had this available in double knit and four ply. And I was really torn. I didn't know which way to go, if I'm honest with you, because I did think the four ply would make beautiful socks, but then so would the DK too. So really, I just thought about instead what I knew I'd got in my stash, because it is considered what I have. And I knew that I'd got mainly four plies. So I thought I'm gonna get this in the DK and I'm gonna make myself a really good pair of socks at some point. This cost me 13.99, it's 100 grams and it's called Riverbank. So this is Symphony Viva DK and you knit it on 3.25 to 3.75 millimeter needles so yeah this is it it's a knit pro in case you didn't know that they did those sorts of yarns um it, it is beautiful and it's really really soft it feels gorgeous so that will be that well that is my special buy if you like and i'm gonna carry on being thoughtful and considered um, and try and hold on to my pennies until I go to the Knitting and Stitching show again much later on this year, where last year I went mad and I bought so much stuff. But I'm really getting through that. I've made some beautiful, beautiful items so far. But I've also got some little project bags put to one side, ready for when I want to challenge myself on things that are a little bit tougher, like uh, mosaic knit knitting, which I've not tried before. And I've also got an all over colour work jumper, which I'm excited to do, but it's kind of within my sort of priority list, if you like, of, of things to make. So now we're gonna move on to what I've been making over the sort of past eight to 12 months um, of, of 2023. Next up, I did some test knitting for Jamie Creates. Um, some I've given away, um, one I don't wear, but I didn't give it away um, because I made it from Wool and the Gang and it was so expensive, it felt a bit luxurious to hand it away, but at the same time, I'm not wearing it. So maybe I should make it into a cushion or something like that. But I did go on to make another one of hers. I can't remember what the name of this pattern was. You can see it's a while since I've worn it. Um, I wish I'd gone up a size. Um, there are errors in it because actually this is correct to do the pearl side there and on the back I should have done pearls but I prefer it just like that really but again it looks quite nice when I wear that with um, a denim shirt but it is quite cropped and that's definitely the theme of her work I would say everything she makes is that little bit shorter which I've come to realize it's not really for me she does particularly like the chunky knits again 
I think there's a time and a place for all of that. Anyway, after that, I went on when I was on holiday and I went to the Wool Zone in Oakham, met the lovely Julie there, and I bought myself, amongst other things, the yarn to make this little cowl that I wear around my neck and I wear it often. It's just the right size. It's got a pretty edging here. Made a few of these. Again, I've gifted them, so I don't have them to show you, but I really like them. They just sit really nice and they sit around my jacket like that. So that's a quite a nice little one. And it's the, I think it's the Adria Phil yarn, which I've got lots more of now because it was in the sale recently. And they just knit up really, really pretty, nice and soft, nice and drapey, and they wash really, really well. Again, in the last year, I was working on something that was a silk um, yarn knit um, that Again, it got stuck, and again, for the same reason, mainly stockinette. Um, but I did blast on in the end, and I did get it finished, and this is it. Pretty little make, this one. Um, lots of errors in it, but I don't care. You can't really tell when I'm wearing it. There we go. So we've got some moss stitches here. Then it's largely stockinette with a little bit of lace work to create the little holes. Um, very big top. It looks fine when it's on. It actually makes it quite sort of drapey and swishy and it's nice and cool. I mean, can you see that? When did you ever wear a knit top that moved quite like that? It is great. Really glad to have had it done. I'm not sure what colour you would say this is. It's not green, it's not blue. It's just, it's just what it is. But certainly I'm glad again to have had this done and finished. Would I make it again? Probably not. Only because stocking at stocking at i do not have the love for stocking at okay so then i went on to make a staple piece which i'm sure you will have seen on my socials which was the utility tank it's a wool and the gang knit it's in this tweed i've worn this absolutely tons and still oh, i can smell those sheep there we go so so good i absolutely love this i say sheep was it alpaca I'll check and I'll let you know. It's a lovely knit, um, and I don't know why, but honest to God, I get so many compliments whenever I wear this. People just absolutely love it. The colours are lovely, the drape's nice, it works well with everything. I don't know whether that's just being a little bit more modern about it, I'm not sure, but people love it. I love wearing it. I love wearing it over dresses as well. It looks really, really good. Um, so yeah, particularly happy with that make absolute success that yes I would go on and make again. So now we're getting on to some beefier makes. Um, I applied to be a test knitter for So Willow. Um, she brought out a pattern called The Whispering Clouds. Um, she designed it as like a memory piece when her dog passed. Um, like a like a grieving kind of process for her, I suppose, where she was able to immerse herself into something and remember Chunk and love him and imagining him in his new home. Um, I was really lucky to be able to test this, this. <coughs> but equally, I was absolutely terrified because there was such a lot to it. Lots and lots of charts in this, um, lots of yarns to hold. It is colour work. So imagine Fair Isle, but blocks of colour really and what we were doing in this was creating a gradient of colour as we went down but also big clouds that just went around the body. It is knit in the round, it was my first experience of splitting for raglans. Um, there was a lot of new skills in this I have to be honest but the fabulous thing is Henry writes her patterns for people like me. Um, she will give you your, uh, the charts but she's clearly also describing with words the process that we're going through and she was categorically there every step of the way if you needed a bit of help, support or encouragement. And this is my knit. So you can see the clouds and you can see they continue on around on the sleeves too. She's got some wonderful tutorials on how to manage and hold all of those yarns. Um, also really helpful things like how to add elastics to some of these key areas to stop them flaring out and also how to organize those yarns when you're actually working with them so again yeah really good process inside of this look at that i mean this was me catching floats did you ever see anything so beautiful in all your life um so yeah this is lovely incredibly warm i'm a cold person incredibly warm so this was 
an absolute success for me and it has been getting me through winter. I'll pop the pattern details below for you. So before I show you my last big make, um, I did some work to prepare for this next big make, which was I've never really done fair eye or work before. I'd had a little tin cup and nothing substantial. So when I was at the Harrogate Knitting and Stitching show, I did buy from, um, Yarn, not Yarndale, from, um, I forget the name every single time, Wednesday Day Long Wall. I can't remember, I'm so, so sorry people. Um, I feel disappointed that I've forgotten the name. It's a shop I always go to in Leyburn. Um, Wendydale Longwall Sheep Shop. Maybe that was the name, I don't know. But I bought these two colours. You can see already that there's a lot of fibre and fluff in this. This is pure Aran wool, 100 grams, pure new wool. And I made um, the friendship hat for my best friend, Erica. Um, I'll pop a picture in because she looks particularly cute with all of her big curls as well. But the idea is you buy two bowls and then you can make two hats. So this is the leftovers ready to make a second hat. But that gave me the chance to practice my um, holding of two yarns whilst I created all the heart details all the way around that hat. So I really, really like that. Really pleased. The next thing I went on to make was my mum a um, hot water bottle cover, just a miniature one. Again, that's got some beautiful sort of Scandi colour work in it, which I was then able to gift her for Christmas. And that practice of how to hold yarns, how to read charts, after working on the jumper for Henry, finally led me to my final piece. So Bella from 100 Acre Wool, I follow her on um, Instagram and I particularly enjoy watching her YouTube um, channel, had made up a jumper that she sent out while calling for testers and I put my hat in the ring thinking there's no chance I'm going to be accepted for this and when I was at the Knitting and Stitching Show in Harrogate, she contacted me to say, you've been chosen, yay! And I was so happy and I was so daunted, how was I ever going to get through this? Um, I chose some flora yarn, I'm, I'm stroking it, <laughs> I chose some flora yarn um, from Drop so that I wasn't spending vast amounts of money on this in case it was an epic fail on my part. But let me tell you, I have worn this a ton of times. It is beautiful. At absolutely beautiful there are some mistakes in this don't care i have long since moved on and you cannot see them the color work goes all the way around i've got some beautiful photos actually that i can show you of me wearing this but honestly i have worn this such a lot i made no changes um, the only thing that I did was on the cuff, so we've got some colour work there. I added this little row of the purple colour there, and I did the same on the hem, just because, just because, really. But yeah, beautiful. This is now available to buy, not mine, you'll have it in mine, but the pattern is available to buy um, from 100 Acre Wool. She's got two more patterns already in test again. I mean, she is knocking out some wonderful, wonderful patterns at the minute. Um, so yeah, that is what I made at the end of 2023. Did I? I did. It was my Christmas plan to get this all made and that is exactly what I did. There's been other makes in between all of those, but I can't really remember what they were and I don't have them to hand. So these were just my main makes for 2023. Those that have sort of like really sort of stuck with me. So I hope that was useful very short video I understand um, but I hope that you found something useful or interesting in all of that and hopefully I won't leave it quite so long next time to share with you what I've been up to but in the meantime thank you so much for being with me today if you've enjoyed what you've seen or if you've got any questions for me or any comments please do put them down in the comments and I will be sure to get back to you and uh, yeah Enjoy whatever you're doing. Have a wonderful day and I will speak to you again very, very soon. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.